come here to remember Paul in this Mass, and certainly every time we come to Mass, we forget time and we remember eternity, and thus we are not moving further away from him as we, in a sense, leave him in the past, but actually moving closer to that day when eternity dawns and we will be with him forever. So with that hopeful thought, let us pray for him in this Mass today, beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. In order to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death so that all might be saved and pass from death to life. We humbly ask you to comfort us in our sorrow as you receive the soul of your servant Paul into the arms of your mercy. You are the Holy One, you are mercy itself. By dying, you unlock the gates of life for all who believe in you. Forgive Paul his sins and human imperfections and grant him a place of happiness, light, and peace in the kingdom of your glory forever. Amen. Let us be seated now as we listen to our readings from the sacred scripture. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On the mountain of the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. The web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord of God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 57. Brothers and sisters, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed in an instant, in the blink of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For that which is corruptible must clothe itself with incorruptibility, and that which is mortal must clothe itself with immortality. And when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Even though time has passed, death is painful and our loss is great. We come together in faith to pray for Paul and to support each other in our grief. Paul had many roles in life. He was a son, a brother, and a friend to many. His role I will always remember most, though, is as a protector. He fiercely protected those close to him and watched over those who needed refuge. In prison, it was widely known that he looked out for the new prisoners, the lonely, the weak. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. The same is true for Paul. He had many dwelling places in his heart for others. I have many fond memories of Paul. I remember him as a kind and gentle giant with raw athletic talent. I don't know if I ever played golf with someone who could hit the ball further. And yet I feel a sense of desolation because he was apart from us for much of his life. We all make choices and some have negative consequences. Paul made some of those choices. But from the letters he sent Lindy, I sensed a growing spirituality and an acknowledgement and acceptance of the reality of his situation. As time passed, he made the best of a challenging environment. And in many ways, Paul walked in the footsteps of Jesus. He spent most of his life among the poor, the outcasts, the marginalized in society. Jesus prayed to our Heavenly Father at the Last Supper. When I was with them, I protected them and I guarded them, and none of them was lost. Amid a desperate situation for many, Paul's friendship and protection gave others hope. I firmly believe that Paul lived with hope and conviction of faith that he would one day dwell in his father's house. Death causes troubled hearts. According to the gospel, the remedy is faith in the Father and in Jesus Christ who reveals him. Death is a homecoming only because we believe in Jesus and his word. Jesus is the way from darkness to light, 
sorrow to comfort, from death's mystery to the Father's house. Our faith can offer comfort and hope, but how do we deal with the pain? There are no easy answers. Many years ago, I stayed in a house next to the Chinakula community on a pilgrimage to Medjugorje. It's a community of about 100 men working to overcome addiction. They wrote a play representing their struggles with drugs and transformation in faith, and I was privileged to see it during my visit. In the play, the lead actor falls deeper and deeper into addiction, and meanwhile, an actor representing Jesus walks behind him with arms wide open. Finally, exhausted, homeless, and completely drained, the lean actor turns his head over his right shoulder and sees our Lord, and he immediately collapses into the arms of Jesus, who holds him tightly. The man finds serenity and peace at last. I thought of this play when I heard of Paul's passing. I could see Paul sitting down on that sidewalk, and as he turned his head, he saw our Lord. And then he fell into Jesus' arms, passing from this life to the next. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. And so together we lift up our brother Paul and pray with confidence that our Lord took him to a place prepared for him. The pain of Paul's death may never entirely pass, but we have many cherished memories. Within our sorrow, may we always remember and celebrate the beauty of his life, a generous man who always protected others. As we gather today to offer praise and thanksgiving for the gift of Paul's life, I leave us with the following words that capture a loved one, return to God in faith. We give them back to you, O God, who gave them to us, Yet as you did not lose them in giving, so we do not lose them by their return. Not as the world gives do you give, O lover of souls. What you give, you do not take away. For what is yours is ours also, if we are yours. Life is eternal. Love is immortal. And death is only a horizon. An horizon is nothing but the limit of our sight. Lift us up, strong Son of God, that we may see further. Cleanse our eyes that we may see more clearly. Draw us closer to yourself that we may know ourselves to be nearer to our loved ones who are with you. And while you prepare a place for us, prepare us also for that happy place, that where you are, we also may be forevermore. Let us all stand now and turning with confidence to God who raised his son, Jesus Christ, from death. Pray for Paul and for ourselves, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. For Paul, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Paul, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased relatives of Paul, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the friends and family of Paul, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, through faith, give us hope that beyond death there will be a life where lost things are found and broken things are mended, 
where there will be rest for the weary and joy for the sad, where all that we have known to be of good will exist, and we will, we will meet once again all those who keep faith. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Let us be seated as we prepare the altar. <laughs> stand and together pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of the name for our good and good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of the soul of your servant Paul, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead, through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs as in one chorus of praise we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Edgar our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember the soul of your servant Paul, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. longing for the coming of that kingdom where we hope to be reunited with all the faithful one day again. Let us pray as Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who on the day of your glorious resurrection appeared before your apostles, saying, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Many 
pray. Lord God, in whom all find refuge, we appeal to your boundless mercy. Grant to the soul of your servant Paul a kindly welcome, a cleansing of sin, a release from the chains of death, and entry into life everlasting. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated now as we listen to some personal reflections on Paul's life. This is from his cousin Sean. I have many fond memories of spending time with Paul during summers at Papanesic Beach. Packing all of our favorite things to do in one day would go like this. Waking up from sleep with a bit of sweat already going from sleeping in one of the cars parked next to the cottage, grabbing our fishing poles and heading down to the spit to catch some sea robins and baby sand sharks, of course, always keeping count to know who was catching the most. Then going out to Otis to play what seemed like our daily competitive round of golf, which sometimes included a few thrown clubs and lovingly competitive curse words between each other. Then returning just before dinner to play a fierce game of wall ball down on Bampas Seawall and finishing the day after a big family barbecue meal at the cottage by cracking wiffle balls around and over the cottage, running and diving into the poison ivy to retrieve home runs and playing until we couldn't see the ball in the dark. Those were my most fun summers spent with my cousin and best summertime bud, Paul. I'll always cherish and remember those days with him forever. I don't cry a lot, but I've been crying a fair amount getting ready for this. It hurts, but it'll be okay. Sometimes it's good to cry to get things out. He was my little brother, and I couldn't help him. And I eventually gave up trying, and I feel guilty for having given up. Mom never gave up, and I have tremendous respect for her because of this. Paul was born in Kansas, April 24th, 1968. Growing up in a military family, we moved a lot, and we're often the new kids. The five years in Virginia and three in Hawaii are the ones I remember most. We shared a room for the last few years in Virginia. It was a carport that Dad had converted into a bedroom. We learned a nerf hoop and went off and played full contact basketball. 
We also played a lot of wiffle ball in our big backyard. I was older and bigger and not very good about ever letting him win. Dad loved sports and he passed that on to all of us. Dad loved all the Boston sports teams. I'm sorry, Paul loved all the Boston sports teams in Notre Dame. When I came back from Germany, Paul and I lived together on and off in Kentucky and Tennessee. We drove up to Knoxville together in the fall of 1990 and saw the Irish beat Tennessee. Our seats were at the very top of the stadium and we ran into my roommates from Notre Dame from my junior year. The four of us went to the house of a local alumnus for a party after the game. It was a good day to be Irish. I think the best thing about Paul was his genuine sense of caring for other people. I think he got that from my mom. I've spoken with a number of you about him recently and that was the common thread. Whether inviting a homeless man into his room during my wedding weekend, as told me by Shannon, or sharing his candy, he mostly cared about other people more than himself. I talked yesterday with his friend Toby about their experiences. He said Paul was very good to him during a very difficult time in his life when he was in his early 20s and facing prison time in a very unfamiliar place. Paul was about 13 years older and welcomed him and showed him the ropes, kept him safe, and helped him get a good job. They both liked all the Boston sports teams and they followed as closely as they could. Toby particularly mentioned watching the Patriots win the Super Bowl with Paul in 2005 when they beat the Eagles in Jacksonville. They had their own fantasy sports leagues and kept all the stats by hand. When Toby was out and Paul was still in, he worked hard to get him information on the Patriots and ND football. Kathy remembers that she would send him Bible verses when he first got into prison, and before long, he was actually sending Bible verses back to her. Lindy remembered him loving to cook with mom and the fact that he liked to dress nice. Carol and Ellen both mentioned how neat he was. I think it's fitting that we're celebrating this, his life here today, in this place, on the Cape. This was home to Paul, and I think he is smiling somewhere, knowing that we are thinking of him. May God bless you, Brother Paul. And may the wind be at your back, and the sunshine warm upon your face. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow Let down us. for the blessing. May the God of all consolation continue to bless you, for in his great goodness he created the human family, and in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, he has given us the hope of rising again. Amen. Amen. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon for our sins. To Paul and all who have died, a place of happiness, light, and peace. Amen. So may we all live happily forever with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. <coughs> Thanks be to God.
We got it done. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy we got it done. Buddy did a really good job, didn't he? This was a sibling creation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 